Fort Worth. This is CBS 11 News Sunday morning. The ones for Texas. Good morning and welcome to CBS 11 News this morning at 7. I'm Jennifer Lindgren. Right now we are working to find out when this stretch of Wichita Street and Forest Hill will be repaired. Yesterday's flash flooding was just too much for the road. A section collapsed and what turned into a river. As we take a look outside right now, you can see a lot has changed in the last 24 hours. The skies are still gray, a little sun peeking through, but there's no rain and things will continue to dry out. Jeff Ray joins us now with that forecast. Hey, Jeff. Thank you, Jennifer. Good morning, everybody. It's Sunday morning here. We're starting to see the clearing coming down from the north. There is still a little bit of light rain around. It is mostly across Kaufman County, Van Zant County, just enough to wet, in the ro wet the roads there. But for the most part, across the Metroplex, skies are starting to clear. We have temperatures. Actually, in the 60s, mid 60s in Fort Worth, Denton and McKinney is in the 60s. Keep in mind, we haven't had an, uh, a morning low at 67 or lower since early June. So it's nice to start this morning with a little Christmas in the air. Crisp air in the air. Temperatures are going to be into the mid 80s. We're still quite a ways till Christmas, actually. But mid 80s for an afternoon high, a little bit of an early present there because of the cooler temperatures, but small rain chances today to our south, small rain chances for all of North Texas over the next several days, actually for the week ahead. We'll spell it out for you coming up in the full forecast, Jennifer. Okay, thanks, Jeff. And don't get caught off guard. Take the Texas weather experts with you on the go with the free CBS DFW weather app. You can track radar live to see if weather will impact your plans. You can also sign up to get personalized alerts to help keep you and your family safe. And don't forget when it is safe to do so, take a picture, shoot some video, and show us what it's like where you are. Tomorrow marks one year since the worst mass shooting in Plano's history. We're told some of the families who lost loved ones will gather for a candlelight vigil tonight. Police say a drunk Spencer Height went to his estranged wife's home where she was having a Cowboys watch party. He killed Meredith Height and seven others before he was killed by police. We told you last month the bar accused of overserving Height shut its doors after surrendering its liquor license. Still, families of four of the victims have filed lawsuits against the bar. Dallas police have named the off duty officer involved in the deadly shooting of Botham Jean. She is Amber Geiger, a four year veteran of the department assigned to the Southeast Patrol Division. Multiple sources confirmed to CBS 11 that this is Geiger, and we do want to be clear it's not a mugshot. As of right now, she's not been arrested or charged as the Texas Rangers invest investigate exactly what happened that night. That's when Amber Geiger, who was off duty and still in uniform, shot and killed Botham Jean in his apartment when she apparently mistook his place for her own. Yesterday, Dallas Police Chief Renee Hall explained why the officer has not yet been charged with any crime. The Texas Rangers had an opportunity to interview the officer. Based on that interview, they asked us to hold off on the warrant until they had an opportunity to investigate some of the information that was provided during that interview. We've learned this is not the first time Officer Geiger has been involved in a shooting. In May of last year, Dallas officers got into a struggle with Uvaldo Perez. Police say he was able to get an officer's taser. That's when investigators say Geiger, who was with the Southeast Crime Response Team at the time, shot and wounded Perez. Family and friends of Botham Jean gathered at the church he worshipped at to remember him, including his mother. Our Yona Gavino reports she, like many others in the community, want answers. It's the sound of heartbreak and hope. Botham Jean's friends and family leaned on each other for support. From their sadness emerged memories of joy. Botham loved to eat and he ate everything we ever cooked. <laughs> As a church member at Dallas West Church of Christ, Jean was a worship leader and a Bible study teacher. <laughs> Co-workers from Price Waterhouse Coopers in Dallas say he inspired them. This world has lost a light in the dark. <laughs> Jean left St. Lucia at 19 to study at Harding University in Arkansas. Campus minister Todd Gentry was his dad away from home. I never thought I'd be here. But in his short life, he lived life. 
Bo's mother, Allison, spoke last. She said her son would bring students from Harding University back to St. Lucia to help the sick and serve others. She's proud of the life her son lived in his 26 years. I am thankful to God that he gave me that son. He gave me a good boy. Thank you very much. Yona Gavino, CBS 11 News. Jean would have turned 27 years old in three weeks. His funeral will be this Thursday at his church. There's still much more to learn about the shooting. We're told Governor Greg Abbott has been briefed about the investigation and the Texas Rangers' handling of the case. Look for updates on CBS 11, our website, and our social media channels. Officers in North Richland Hills are being outfitted with body cameras. Like many other, other departments, we're told they will be used as another layer of transparency to police the city. The equipment was primarily paid for with a grant and is already in use. One of the most popular smart devices for homes is credited with cutting crime in some communities, but police warn the popular video doorbells can be problematic as well. Our Andrea Lucia explains it's not so much the doorbell devices, but how people are using them. Get out of there! Stolen packages, suspicious characters, and home burglaries. Video doorbells are capturing all kinds of crime on camera. It's captured right here. I mean, it's a phenomenal. Uh, tool to assist detectives. Garland Police Lieutenant Pedro Barano says cameras like the one on his own front door have helped crack cases. But the ease of sharing these videos means neighbors sometimes see them before police. They're immediately putting them out on social media, and all of a sudden we'll start getting calls based on video that's already out there. Barano says that can lead people to being falsely accused. So everyone out there is saying, okay, well, this person committed a crime, when the reality is they didn't. It can also hinder an investigation if the criminal knows what police are looking for. But they're going to change their clothing. They perhaps might change their appearance. They're going to change the car they're driving. Police are asking people to call 911 and report crimes or even simple suspicious activity to law enforcement first. And when the officer arrives, let them know that you actually have video surveillance. And before you share, they say, you may want to ask. Because the detective is going to be able to say, hey, I've already identify that person, let us do it, don't put that out there just yet. Andrea Lucia, CBS 11 News. Well, we've been waiting months for it, the return of Dallas Cowboys football, and we're now just hours away from the season opener. And there are a growing number of players who have a lot to prove when the Cowboys hit the field against the Panthers this afternoon. As Bill Jones tells us, Ezekiel Elliott is at the top of that list. That's exactly it. Uh, I want to prove I'm the best back in the game. and. Uh... You know, that, that's what my focus this offseason was. Do you run better with a chip on your shoulder? Uh, we'll see. <laughs> you may not be able to see that chip on Zeke Elliott's shoulder, but he says it's there. And last year, it was like Zeke had a boulder on his shoulder. And you can point to one three-game stretch in November that killed any real chance the Cowboys had of making the playoffs. Those were the first three games of his six-game suspension when the Cowboys got blown out by a combined score of 94-22. to But this is a new year, and Zeke wants to make amends for last year, chomping at the bit to get going Sunday at Carolina. I'm young. I got fresh legs. I'm going to grind it out. Uh, there's no pacing every week in the NFL matters. And, uh, you know, if they want to give it to me 30, 35 times a game, I'll take that. The thing that impresses me the most about him, uh, he's had a lot of success early on in his career, but, you know, he wants to be great. He works at, at, at every day. I'm definitely going into this year with a, with a chip on my shoulder, and uh, I think I have a lot to prove. So I, I, I would say uh, with my preparation this offseason, I just I was more focused and, uh, you know, just ready to go out there and prove, prove what I can do on the field. It's a 325 kickoff on Sunday afternoon, the Cowboys and the Carolina Panthers. I'm Bill Jones, and that's the latest on the Cowboys. Our coverage starts this morning with game day at 1030. Hall of Famer Randy White will be in the CBS 11 studios with our Bill Jones, and Keith Russell is live with the team in Carolina. A homecoming queen in Mississippi trades her crown and gown for a football helmet and jersey. <laughs> Kick. 
Patrick. That's Kaylee Foster, homecoming queen and a team kicker, making a deciding extra point in overtime. Foster plays a different kind of football in the offseason. She calls soccer her first love. And the cheers get even louder at the CBS 11 pep rally. If you're not tuning in to CBS 11 News Friday mornings, here's just some of what you're missing. This is Cougar territory. <laughs> After an early morning, the Western Hills Cougars went on to defeat Carter Riverside Friday night, 42 to 3. This week, meteorologist Annalise Parks is headed to Richardson High School. Tune in at 4:30 a.m. Coming up next, after serving up treats North Texans for more than a century, why the Highland Park Soda Fountain is closing its doors for good today. But first, one more update from the forecast with Jeff. Sure, some clouds around this morning, but no appreciable rain. How long will it stay dry across the Metroplex? Forecast coming up.